The final thing in this section is our old friend. Our old friend is linear motion. Remember, this is the movement of a particle along a straight line. You know, the line sometimes goes left to right or up and down like this, but it's just a point moving along a line. And we have talked about how to get the velocity and acceleration from the position by taking derivatives. So I hope it's obvious if you want to do the reverse, you find the antiderivatives. Okay. So I did an example over here. Um, you should definitely watch the video. This is a very typical type of problem. I'm pretty sure there's homework questions that are like this. Uh, so definitely study that. Um, Aisha pointed out to me at the beginning of class that I, I made a typo here. I didn't put the divide by two in this. Um, when I plugged in the 88 over 15 seconds. So please fix that in your notes. And I wanted to look at a example where, so I created a classwork here. So I created this classwork eight. And what do we want to find? I want you to find what's the velocity function? What's the position function? Now we're going to have plus Cs, but they give us an initial value for the velocity and they give us an initial value for the position. So I want you guys to try number eight and let me know when you finish that. So let's find the antiderivative of this guy. The antiderivative of 2t is 2t squared over 2 plus the antiderivative of 1 is just t plus c, right? So, um, so let me simplify that. That's going to give us t squared plus t plus c. And now I want to use the initial condition to solve for c. So I'm going to get v of 0 is equal to 0 squared plus 0 plus c. The left-hand side they gave us is negative 2. The right-hand side is just c. So my final answer is going to be v of t is equal to t squared plus t minus 2. That's the velocity function. Any questions about that? All right, so now we find the antiderivative of that to get the position. So the position function is going to be the antiderivative of that. It's going to be t cubed over 3 plus the antiderivative of t is t squared over 2. And the antiderivative of a constant is just 2 times t plus another constant. I'm going to call it d this time because c was something else. I hope you guys all realize that the independent variable is time t. So we're not going to use x's, we're going to use t's. OK. Is there any questions about that antiderivative there? Now I'm going to solve the initial condition. So we're going to have um, s of 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 minus 0 plus d. And we know that the left-hand side is equal to 3. That means the right-hand side is equal to d. This. So your answer for the position function is going to be something that looks like this. t cubed over 3 plus t squared over 2 minus 2t two plus 3. Is there any questions about this so far? No questions. Um, I want to say something before we leave this section. Uh, some people are really good at recognizing patterns. And I'm a little worried that some of you are like, oh, when they give me this initial condition, that initial condition is always just the missing constant term. Like, 
sometimes students look at this, they do this pattern matching, and then they notice this pattern, and then they think, oh, the initial condition is always going to be that extra constant. And that's not true. I mean, that's straight up false. So I just wanted to show you a simple example. <gasps> I didn't even see this problem here. Oh my goodness. We're going to have to do these on um, Wednesday. I don't have time to do these right now. Um, but we will do it on Wednesday before our test, and then we'll take our test after. Okay. So I just wanted to give you a quick example. Like, let's say I told you that V of T is equal to cosine of T. And then let's say I told you that V of zero is equal to five. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, sorry, make this a sign of sine of T like this. So when you do this, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, right? So this is going to be negative cosine of T plus C. But when you plug in, and I, I need to give you S of zero, not V of zero, sorry, S of zero. But when you plug in a zero on both sides, you're going to get um, you're going to get a five on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, you're going to get negative cosine of zero plus c. But cosine of zero is not zero. Cosine of zero is one. So this is really five is equal to negative one plus c. So in this case, your c is actually equal to six. So your actual antiderivative would be position function is equal to negative cosine of t plus six, actually. So just be careful. Like, don't assume that the initial condition is always the C, because here's an example where it's not. Does that make sense? All right, folks.